Hey guys, my name's Cooper Brownlee and I edit most of the Colony videos. Today I'm going to run you through on how I edit a BMX video. Alright, first up I'm just going to show you how I keep my clips together. You can see here I've got them arranged month by month. It makes it way, way easier to know where footage is doing it this way. The other thing I find that helps a lot is the way you name your clips. It really helps for when you're aligning all the footage on the timeline. It's easier to separate your B-roll footage, your crash footage, all your actual riding clips. Way easier when you've named them a certain way. You can see here how I have the rider's name first. Then it'll either be like if it's a crash or if it's B-roll. If it's a clip, then you'll see that it's just a description of that clip, maybe where it was filmed. That sort of comes down to your personal preference, what helps you remember what that clip is. Alright, so the first thing I do when I'm editing a video, once I've brought all the footage into Premiere, I drop it all on the timeline and then separate it. So that I have all the writing clips in one part all the b-roll in another part and then the crash clips in another part this just helps with like organizing it all getting a rough cut done easier once all the writing clips are put together on a timeline i trim them down to like a rough sort of length that you would edit them to and then i export it out at a low res just to show the writer in this case pat what we're working with then i upload the video to youtube i set it to unlisted so no one else can see it but i can send pat the link so that he can check it out this is also helped for when we're trying to find a song so he can play music over that timeline and i can do the same here and it's easier to sort of get an idea of what song's going to work or what type of music's going to work for the edit when it comes to all the b-roll footage and the crash footage i like to organize it so that all the clips that are associated with one writing clip are together then when i come to edit it i know how much b-roll i've got to sort of work with on a clip and also helps to sort of make note of which clips have the most b-roll which ones are the best b-roll and the same deal with all the crashes when it comes to finding a song for a video because i work on a lot of video projects i have a playlist in my spotify that sort of come up on along the way that i think might work for future projects so i might find a song pretty quickly for a video once we've got a song that we're both happy with the first thing i do is put that song on the timeline and play through the song making notes of any parts of the song that have good areas that might work for b-roll or slow-mo or maybe crash clips just anything that's sort of like a like a highlight part of that song that I know that could work real well with a certain clip or just real good b-roll then I go through all the b-roll footage and also the crash clips and just make notes of which clips have a good amount of b-roll or a good amount of crash clips just for the same as before like it just helps me remember that if I find a good part in the song that needs quick cuts I can quickly know that I've got you know three or four good writing clips that will work with that once I've got all the notes made for the music then I'll probably pick those highlighted bits of the song that might work for a good slow-mo clip and they're basically the first clips that i'll put in the edit if i know there's a real good spot that i can picture having you know maybe it's a, a bunch of different b-roll cuts into a clip i'll do that first and basically do all those highlighted parts of the edit first and then sort of work around them Obviously you want a real good clip to start the video. So I'll grab all the clips that I think could possibly work and it's like a process of elimination. I'll just try each one, play it with the music and see what works. You'll probably get two or three that are possible. And then again, it's like a process of elimination. You test them again, see what works best, timing of the music with the clip, the length of it, and then go from there. Once I have the first clip sorted, then I go straight to the end and work on the last clip. As long as you've got that clip, it's obviously going to be the end of the song, so you can work on it pretty easily, and it eliminates another clip from the timeline that you know you're not going to use anywhere else. Once I've edited up all the clips that work in a particular part of the song, then I'll either start from the start of the video, and find something that works well there, and then just work my way through, or I might work from either side of one of the clips that are already in there and I basically like I said before almost a process of elimination you know some some clips will just slot straight in you almost don't even like you barely edit them others you've got to really work for it all just sort of comes together one clip at a time sometimes I'll grab every single clip and try in the one spot until I find the right one then I know that's the best one I've got out of everything and just go from there once I have a rough cut done of the video, I usually work on the intro of the video. Some videos have real short intros, some have pretty long intros. It really just depends on the song and the video piece that you're working on. You can see here with Pat's, I've got a bit of space for an intro. Once I have the intro done, I'll put in the titles that I've already made. You can see here I put in the colony title and, and the writer's name. And then I do the same at the end with the outro, whether it's a web address, an end screen. It just depends on the video that you're working on, but this one's pretty much just a straight web address at the end of it. Next up is color correcting. Because I use two of the same cameras for fisheye and long lens, and I shoot pretty neutral, it makes this part of the process fairly easy. 
I already have a preset set up that I like to use for anything that goes on YouTube, which basically just makes the footage pop a little bit more without oversaturating it. You'll find anything you upload to YouTube, the colors will actually desaturate. So my preset oversaturates it to allow for when it gets compressed and uploaded on YouTube. I put this preset over all the footage at once. Then I'll go through it and you'll find there'll be a few different clips that you've got to dial in. Usually it'll crush the black too much on some footage or maybe there's some night clips in there so they're going to be completely different. But my preset sort of gives me a good base and then I'll just dial them in one by one until I'm happy with everything. The last thing I work on is audio. When I'm editing a video, I don't have the audio on. I just find it easier to just focus on the editing part, matching things with the beats of the music. Basically, I do the same thing as I do with color correcting, where I go through each clip individually and just adjust the audio if it needs to go a little bit higher or lower. They're always going to be different, especially if, like long lens to fisheye is different as well. So you've got to sort of take that into account. Sometimes if I shoot two angles, I'll use the fisheye audio for both the long and the fish and just drop the audio down a little bit on one of them so they match up. Once everything done and you're happy with it, it's time to export it. I have a YouTube preset already ready to go. But the main things you want to look out for is making sure your source and output match. So basically matching your sequence settings. So if it's 1920 by 1080, make sure your output's the same. Also look at your frame rate and making sure it's doing the same thing as matching as well. The other thing to look out for is your bitrate. Making sure you've got correct bitrate settings for what you're using the video for. It will vary depending on if you're making a DVD, a web video, or even Instagram. They're all kind of different. So it's something to look out for. That's pretty much it. I hope this video helped some people out there. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments.